we're going to the second segment of that extraocular muscle class. If you haven't seen the first part of the video, I suggest you see the first part so that you will understand the second part better. So uh, we are going into the actions of each of the extraocular muscles. Uh, this picture is showing you the right orbit from the superior view. Okay, this is a right orbit. We're going to see the superior view. So uh, this is the eyeball in the orbit. This is the medial wall. This is the lateral wall. This is the eyeball located anteriorly in the orbit, and you have all the extraocular muscles posteriorly. So you have eyeball here, the medial wall and lateral wall, the eyeball in front, and all the muscles there. So the first uh, group of muscles that I want you to learn is the medial rectus and lateral rectus because that is the most easiest. Okay. This is the eyeball in a primary gaze position. When the right medial rectus contracts, it will cause adduction of the right eyeball. When the right lateral rectus contracts, it will cause abduction of the right eyeball. Next, we are going into the action of the superior rectus. You can see here very well illustrated that this is the uh, primary gaze uh, axis, okay, visual axis. When the both eyeballs are looking straight, uh, the axis of vision is like this. But the superior rectus axis is not that. Superior rectus line of pull is uh, 23 degrees outwards to the line of primary gaze of the eyeball. You try to imagine that the eyeball, instead of primary gaze, the eyeball is abducted 23 degrees. In that situation, when the superior rectus contracts, it will cause elevation of the eyeball. Okay, since you know that the inferior rectus is parallel to the superior rectus but just below the optic nerve, when the inferior rectus contracts in the 23 degree abducted eyeball, it will cause depression. Now, imagine a case that the eyeball is not abducted but the eyeball is adducted. Can you imagine that the eyeball, the cornea is not looking uh, like this, the cornea is uh, adducted to this position, it is looking like this, almost perpendicular to the line of pull of the superior rectus. If I pull the eyeball like this and adduct it so that the visual axis is now almost 90 degrees with the line of pull, okay, in that situation when the superior rectus contracts, it will cause intorsion of the eyeball. You already remember what is intorsion, intorsion is the clock face, 12 o'clock position turning inwards. So superior rectus when it contracts the adducted eyeball, it will cause intorsion. In the adducted eyeball, when the inferior rectus contracts, it will cause extorsion. So you can understand here that the superior rectus is not only having a single action, it can have secondary actions as well, depending on the position of the eyeball. So superior rectus is an elevator in the abducted eye, but it is an intorter of the adducted eye. The inferior rectus is a depressor of the abducted eye, but it is an extorter of the adducted eye. Now we will look at the, the actions of the obliques. Okay. This you know is the superior oblique. It is, a, uh, it is a unique muscle. It takes origin from the apex, runs like this at the junction between the medial wall and the uh, roof. It takes a turn at the pulley and then it goes like this and attaches to the eyeball. That is a line of pull of superior oblique. You are looking at the superior oblique from above. That is a view that you are seeing here. So we will uh, react this situation again. This is the primary gaze position eyeball. I am bringing this primary gaze position eyeball into an adducted position into a plane that is parallel to the superior oblique line of pull. See in this picture, it's at 51 degrees from the line of primary gaze. From the line of primary gaze, this is 51 degrees adducted inwards. So if the eyeball is adducted, the superior oblique muscle can now pull the eyeball and the eyeball will go to depression. So superior oblique is a depressor of the adducted eyeball. Why adduction? Because when the eyeball is adducted, it becomes in line with the superior oblique line of pull. Now we'll take the situation in which the eyeball is abducted. The, when the eyeball is abducted, so the right superior oblique which is running like this will cause intorsion. We'll consider the inferior oblique. Inferior oblique, the only difference is inferior oblique is not taking origin from the apex, it is taking origin from the floor of the orbit. But the line of pull is similar, parallel to the superior oblique, it's just that it's below the eyeball. So this is the inferior oblique. When the eyeball is adducted, inferior oblique will cause elevation. When the eyeball is abducted, the inferior oblique contraction will cause an extorsion, an extorsion. So, if we consider elevation as a movement altogether, when the eyeball is abducted, superior rectus is the main elevator. When the eyeball is adducted, 
inferior oblique is the main elevator different muscles are acting as the primary elevator depending on the eyeball position in the primary gaze position two third of elevation is by superior rectus and one third of elevation is by inferior oblique so it is a gradation both of these will act together to cause elevation uh, on the different positions of the eyeball so similarly you can work out in each of the eyes in each of the positions so this is the basic mechanics i want you to understand next this is very important clinically you need to understand these nine cardinal gaze positions which you will be using to test the patient's eye movements so in the center of that nine images you can see the patient is looking straight okay that is called the primary gaze position from the primary gaze position you can ask the patient to move to all the other eight positions okay first time i can ask the patient to look up so both eyeballs will be elevated I can ask the patient to look to the right. We'll first work out what, what are the muscles that are acting when on looking to the right. When I ask the patient to look to the right, the right eyeball will be abducted and the left eyeball will be adducted. So the muscles that are acting are the right lateral rectus and the left medial rectus. Okay, these two muscles are together causing the rightward gaze. Okay, now we are going to uh, work out what are the muscles that are ca causing a specific movement for example from this position from the right position i am asking the patient to look at the right upper corner that is this point okay which are the muscles that can act this is the right eyeball this is the left eyeball when the right eyeball is abducted which is the muscle that will cause elevation it is a superior rectus so the right superior rectus will cause my right eyeball to elevate into the right upper corner but the left eyeball which is adducted if i want to bring it to that point then I have to contract the left inferior oblique. So the right superior rectus and the left inferior oblique will contract to cause an elevation into the right upper corner. So similarly, you can work out in each of these cases which all muscles can act to uh, create that particular gaze. So this is the importance of nine cardinal gaze positions. Next, we are going to describe the innervation of the extraocular muscles. These are the extraocular muscles and this is a sectional view of the uh, lower part of the brain, that is the brain stem. This is the midbrain, this is the pons and this is the medulla. The nerves that are important for the action of the extraocular muscles are 3, 4 and 6. The 3 is oculomotor, 4 is trochlear and 6 is abducens. So, the black dot is the third nerve motor nucleus, that is oculomotor nerve motor nucleus. The yellow dot is the fourth nerve nucleus called the trochlear nerve motor nucleus. These two, three and four is located in the midbrain, okay, this is the midbrain. The next you have the sixth nerve nucleus, sixth nerve nucleus is located in the tegment of the pons. This is the pons. From the sixth nerve nucleus, you have the abducens nerve exiting anteriorly and it is going to innervate the lateral rectus. That is the only muscle that is innervated by the abducens nerve. Next, the fourth nerve nucleus gives off the trochlear nerve and the trochlear nerve is unique in many ways. One of the unique feature of the trochlear nerve is that it is arising dorsally from the brainstem. So, in the brainstem, the abducens nerve exits anteriorly, the trochlear nerve exits posteriorly, it will decussate and that will go, go and innervate the superior oblique muscle. You can see the superior oblique taking a turn at the trochlea and going and uh, attaching to the eyeball on the posterior lateral segment. All the other extraocular muscles including the levator palpebrae superioris is innervated by the third nerve or the oculomotor nerve and this can be remembered using a mnemonic lr6 so4 it almost looks like a chemical formula it's a mock chemical formula lr stands for lateral rectus it is by the sixth nerve so stands for uh, superior oblique superior oblique is innervated by trochlear nerve and r3 rest of all the other muscles are innervated by the third nerve so if sixth nerve is injured you will have a lateral rectus palsy if fourth nerve is injured you can have a superior oblique palsy if third nerve is transected you can have an LPS palsy, very important. So the patient will have a complete tosis or drooping of the eyeball and all the other extraocular muscles will be denervated except lateral rectus and superior oblique. Okay. So you can work out each of these uh, scenarios, each of the nerve innervation lesions and what will be the deficits formed by it by understanding uh, this basic anatomy of the extraocular muscles. Thank you.